to another presentation in the Heart Centre Business Summit. I'm joined by the fabulous Trisha Wren, and we're going to be talking about why the energetic health of your horse or pet matters. Before I hand over to Trisha, I do want to just let you know, if you haven't yet registered for Summit, go to the link in the description of this Facebook Live and make sure that you register because that's how you get access to the full um, schedule as well as all of the recordings and all of the freebies all in one place for you. Um, if you're here live, please do say hello in the comments box. It's always lovely to see everyone commenting and saying hi. And if you are here live as well, make sure you ask your comments as we ask your questions as we go. And I will hold those over for Trisha and I'll ask her those questions for you at the end of her presentation. And make sure that you also use hashtag nodding if you find yourself nodding along with what Trisha is sharing. It's our way of giving that feedback to our speakers because we cannot see your beautiful faces on the other side of the internet. And if you're watching on the replay, make sure you use hashtag replay in, um, in the comments when you're asking any questions or anything because we can check back and, and uh, check and see if there are any further questions from the replay. All right, well, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to the amazing Trisha. Take it away, lovely. Thanks, Tash. I'll just share my screen for you. Opening a second. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming. There we go. Hope you can all see that okay. Thanks for yep, coming. Perfect. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're all here and um, I'm excited to share this with you. Why your horse or pet's energetic health matters. You know those times where your horse or pet just seems off and you can't quite figure out why? Maybe you've been through a process of elimination, ticking everything off, um, checking diet, uh, checking uh, where your dog sleeps at night and all of those things that you, you can try and, and identify as problem areas and still you're no closer to figuring it out. And maybe you've even checked with the vet and they can't um, identify anything. But you know something's just not right. We're close to our pets and our horses, and, and as owners, we know when something's off. We want the animals in our life to be happy and healthy. And it's worrying and frustrating if we can't pinpoint how to help them feel better. In my experience as an animal communicator, I found that often the missing piece of the puzzle is that their energy is out of balance. Just like us, everyday or unusual events can cause their energy, energy field um, to uh, get out of balance, which in turn affects their emotions, their behavior or their health. So what we're going to look at today <clears throat> is how to figure out what's going on, how energetic imbalance might be affecting your animals, and what you can do about it. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, coughing and spluttering here. I think I'm patient zero with all the lurgy that's going around in New Zealand at the moment. So a little bit about me. I'm an animal communicator and healer. And whilst I do work with all animals, my specialty is horses. That's one of my horses there. And her name is Guru. That could have been a factor in why I bought this horse. <laughs> and um, before becoming an animal communicator, I spent 15 years working full time with horses. So I get a much deeper level of information from them than from other animals. Some of it's because I have a different connection with horses. 
and some of it I believe is because we do more with horses and we expect more of horses. We strap gear on them, we climb on their backs and ride them, we put them in little boxes and drive them around. We expect quite a lot. In the course of my animal communication sessions, I've discovered that the addition of energy balancing and healing can really give a profound transformation to animals' happiness and behavior. So what about you? If you're watching, if you're joining us here in the Heart Centered Group, then you're probably a female online entrepreneur working from home. <clears throat> and if you're working from home, that enables you to have the pets that you want, doesn't it? It means that you can um, perhaps have that uh, block of land in the country that you want, rather than having to work in the city nine till five. It means that you can have the pets that you want. You can um, not have to worry about leaving them at home all day on their own or having to find doggy daycare or a dog walker. And at the same time, it can be a bit of a solitary existence. We're working at home behind a computer on our own. Unless you're working with clients online all day, maybe you don't speak to anyone from one day to the next or only you know your husband at night or something so it can be a bit solitary and our pets might be our only company during the day they're our team they're our sounding boards and they're someone to um, make a physical connection with during the day <coughs> and if you're lucky and you have a horse um, maybe or even a dog maybe they help you to get outside during the day and not just be sat on your backside the whole time so they can help us to get the fresh air we need and uh, remember to go outside and exercise now many of us here in the heart centered group are health conscious we've just listened to jacqueline's presentation about the chakras and the importance of the base chakra. And so hopefully this little picture makes some sense to you of the seven major chakras in a person and the energy field that's around us. We in this group tend to have an awareness of how the health of our mind, body and emotions affects our business. The terms chakra, aura, and energy are pretty common in this group. It's also fairly accepted that each of these areas needs to be in balance for optimal health. But have you ever considered whether the same applies to your horse or your pets? So here's the same chakra chart, but for a horse. And you can see they have the same seven major chakras, but they're horizontal instead of vertical. In lots of ways, animals are much simpler than us. In my animal communication sessions, I found that mostly um, animals let go of past experiences much easier than humans do and faster. Where we tend to need to do a lot of inner work like EFT, tapping, journaling, mindset work, peeling back lots of layers of the onion. For the majority of animals, in my experience, once it's gone, it's gone. Having said that, they do get out of balance just as easily and often as we do. Their energy field or aura can shrink or lose strength and their chakras can get out of alignment, out of balance, just the same as us. So how do they get out of balance? Well, it might be that you took your horse to a show and there were 
volatile or excitable horses around that adversely affected your horse or upset them. Just the stress of a competitive or new environment can affect a horse and affect their um, the energy bubble around them, if you like. Maybe your pet has been sick, which can lower the energetic resistance. Uh, perhaps things at home are a bit fraught. Maybe you've had a visitor that upset the dynamics in the house, or maybe you've got a new family member or a new puppy or kitten that just shifts things. Maybe something's going on with you and your husband and just divorce is on the cards. All of that can affect our animals, either physically or emotionally, which in turn affects them energetically. So the things that you might notice, the way that you can tell whether energetically your animal is getting out of balance, there are three main ways. The first one is emotional. If you notice emotional changes in your horse or your pet, especially kind of unaccountable things, things that you just can't quite make sense of. If they become sad or grumpy or angry and, and you don't know why. There might be behavioral changes Maybe your cat stop use, stops using the litter tray or your horse doesn't want to load in the float anymore or seems spookier or more anxious than usual. And it might be a performance change. <coughs> Excuse me. So with horses, for instance, um, maybe he's not performing to his usual standard and you've checked everything you can think of, you've checked his tack, you've checked his teeth, his back, his feet, his diet, and nothing makes any sense, you just know something is still off. So just like us, in order to maintain their happiness and health, and hopefully prevent those behavior blips, they really benefit from us doing what we can to keep their energy, so that's their energy field or aura and their chakras in balance. How are we going to do that? Well, most types of energy work can help. Whether it's you doing it, you asking someone to come and work with your animals in person, or someone like me doing it remotely, things like Reiki, acupuncture, any kind of energy healing can really help to keep your animal in a balanced place. So who's up for a little um, tryout of something you can do for your animals? <coughs> I'll run this through for you now and then later when you're actually with your animal you can do it again and you can do this as often as you like. It's also a good thing to do if you're um, separated from your animal for whatever reason, if you're on holiday or um, you're away at a conference or something like that, you can do this remotely to just maintain a nice connection with your animals. So if you're driving, keep your eyes open, obviously, um, but get yourself comfortable with your feet on the floor if that's convenient for you right now. And just sit quietly with your eyes closed and focus on your breathing for a few moments. Nice deep breaths in and out. Getting yourself into a rhythm and just focusing on your breath until you feel yourself start to settle a little bit and your mind start to soften.
And then in your mind, I just want you to visualize your horse, your pet, all of your animals together if you want. Just have a picture of them in your mind. Bring your focus to your heart. Breathing deeply into your heart. And imagine your heart filling with pink energy, filling with love, overflowing with unconditional love. And then as you come back to that picture in your mind of your pet or your animals, visualize sending that pink energy from your heart to their heart. See it going as a stream of pink all the way to them. And if you're not a visual person, intention is everything. You can just say in your mind, I'm sending you unconditional love from my heart to yours. Notice how that feels. Notice if anything else pops into your mind, any feeling of gratitude, any other visuals that you get. And then bring yourself back into the room with me. How did that feel? You could let us know in the chat box if um, how that felt to you. So that's something that you can do anytime with your pets. Um, just find some time where you won't be disturbed. You can lightly um, hold or touch them if you want to, if you've got a smaller animal especially, and if they don't mind that. And if you have something bigger, like a horse, you can sit in the paddock with them doing it. And you can also do it remotely. If it's raining outside, by all means, sit in the warmth and imagine your horse out in the paddock. <clears throat> so that one little exercise can really improve your connection with your animals, reassure them, and help to maintain their energetic balance. Now, as an animal communicator, my point of difference is the energy work that I include in my sessions. So I don't just chat to animals, I routinely clear and rebalance the energy field and the chakras and the meridians where required. I clear associations with past lives that are adversely affecting the animal in this lifetime. And that's really common for horses. I haven't found that really so much with dogs and cats, but with horses, past life experiences really affect them. They carry that all forward. But they're fairly easy to clear and it seems to make a positive difference for them. I also release retained trauma energetically, again, primarily for horses, but for um, rescue animals that can be really powerful too, if they've had bad experiences or um, accidents and things like that, <clears throat> any kind of trauma. All the work that I do is remote. I do it when I'm guided to, not to a specific schedule and owners just send me a photo of their horse or pet. So what's cool is that quite often I get feedback um, from clients who don't know when or if I did the session with their animal, saying that they noticed a shift. Things like, um, I got home today and I knew you'd spoken to my horse because blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, they're whole demeanor was different. He seemed happier. He came to me and he hasn't done that for ages, those sorts of things. Um, or cats that have started using their litter tray again. Uh, so 
owners can tell the difference. They know when I've done a session with their animal. And to me, that energetic work gives a much deeper transformation to the animal than just chatting to them. And how often do they need it? Well, it might depend on you and what you've got going on in your life. If you're struggling energetically or emotionally, then just know that that might affect your animal too. If you're doing regular um, inner work or energy healing of any kind, maybe get your animal done on the same kind of schedule to make sure that you're staying, uh, you're both staying balanced. The um, time frames might also depend on the animal. So if you've recently taken on a rescue animal, for instance, or if your pet has been sick or injured, something more regular might be required, like daily or weekly energy balancing. Even just growing animals, if you have a, a puppy or a kitten, um, growing can really throw their energy out of balance. So that's another good time to consider a regular checkup or rebalance. And animals that are mostly okay, they can probably go for a couple of months between balances. Be guided by how they seem in the days following a session or following an energy balance. If they seem improved, then just be on the lookout for if or when things change again. So if your cat has been using the litter tray fine and stops, so if they stop doing something they have been doing, or if they start doing something they haven't been doing, or if their emotions change in some way, then it would be good to get a checkup and they may need their energy cleared and rebalanced. If big things are afoot at home, if you're changing, um, moving house um, or getting a divorce or something big like that, you might consider um, uh, energy balances before and after to help your pet with the transition, including the animal communication portion so that things can be explained to them and really help them if necessary. So in summary, if your pet is unwell, ensuring that their energy is in balance can help them to heal better. Energetic imbalances can show up or manifest as emotional or behavioral issues. So be on the lookout for that. And if you can keep them and yourself in an energetically balanced place, they'll stay in a more consistent, healthy and happy place. And ultimately, that's what we want for our pets. I hope you found that useful. Do shout out in the comments if you've got any comments, any questions, I'm happy to answer and I'll just stop sharing the screen. Lovely. Thank you so much, Trisha. When I did that little connection thing, Munchkin came into my office. Oh, Munchkin. Nice. There she is. We've set up the bed <laughs> next to her for Summit because she doesn't like me being on the computer all day. <laughs> Normally, I'm only on the computer for a couple of hours, and now with Summit, I'm on the computer all the time. <laughs> yes. ah, so she needs to be closer to me. I love it. All right, well, thank you so much for that presentation, Trisha. There were lots of people who um, were commenting as we went along. If you've got any questions for Trisha, then please do pop them into the comments box and I will ask those of her. And Trisha, I believe you have a freebie for everyone who's listening along as well. I do. I've put together a checklist of the things that I spoke about. So you can have a one page reminder of the things to look out for and what you can do about it. And um, also in there, if you scroll to the bottom, there's a special offer for you um, with 10% um, off uh, an energy balance and animal communication session. So if you're curious about how this could help your horse or your pets, grab that and get your discount. I love it. And I must also say, 
that um, Trisha actually works with Munchkin every week at the moment because she's had a huge move coming over to New Zealand from Singapore and um, and it, it's making such a difference, Munchkin's energy. I can notice a difference like when she needs another one and when she's had one. So yeah, yeah it's really powerful work. And I, I love what you said in your presentation, Trisha, like I get kinesiology when I'm feeling a bit off. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't I get an energy balance for my pet as well? Exactly. And it's so lovely that you provide those services. So thank you, lovely lady. If you loved this presentation, now, first of all, there were no questions, but if you have one, we've got time to answer them. So pop them in the comments box. And if you love this presentation, make sure you go out and check out Trisha Wren on social media. Trisha will put her links into the comments um, of the Facebook Live uh, once we've finished up. So you can go and lovingly stalk her. <laughs> and also make sure that you go to the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group and let Trisha know why you loved her presentation and what you're going to do as a result of it as well. I'm sure she would love to get your tags and hear what that presentation um, helped you with and uh, what you've done as a result. Fabulous. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we've got any questions popping in. I'll just give one last check because we've got lots of thank yous popping in the chat box. Trisha, make sure you go and check them out. Everybody loves you. Um, no questions have popped up. So we'll close it up there. We have a break now in the summit. Uh, we are, it's 11 a.m. AEST right now. Our next session is Caroline Power, and that is at 12.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that's Brisbane time, 1.30 p.m. for Southern States in Australia. So make sure that you come back and join us for Caroline Power as the next session in summit. And until then, a big thank you to you, Tricia. And we Thank cannot you. wait to see you shine. Bye.